Um, welcome. Um, we are um, relaunching our webinar series. In the past, we've done a uh, disinfect and protect uh, that we launched around April, um, which seems like a long time ago. Um, but we, we feel the need. There's some actually new and exciting things to talk about here uh, on top of amenity assessments and trends uh, that's happened with New York City and, and New York uh, as of the last couple of days. Uh, but let's dive right in. And what, what we're really focused on here today um, is just what, what can be done in these amenity spaces. In the past, we've done a lot of disinfect and protect, how to reopen, things like that. There's still a little bit of that in this presentation here, but we really want to focus in on um, a lot of our centers have opened, some of our regions have not opened. Uh, what is happening to these amenity spaces given COVID, given some of the new trends, what's the expectation, what are the demands? Uh, and a lot of this really circles back to, you know, the obviously health and wellness, right? Um, but the lifestyle, the community, uh, the social aspect uh, that these facilities um, create. So I am Jeff Shipman. I am the president and CEO of Heartline Fitness Products. Uh, and again, these are bi-weekly webinars. We'll run them every other Wednesday from 10 to 11. We'll have different panelists uh, come in and speak about specific uh, industry trends. Um, Probably in about two to three weeks, we're actually going to have a guest speaker. I'm pretty excited about this, um, really focusing in on virtual fitness. So again, we will offer these webinars every other uh, Wednesday, uh, 10 to 11. Uh, and we're running them out right now. When you sign up in Zoom, you'll see they go all the way out to, to December, the end of this year. Um, Heartline Fitness, if you didn't know, um, we are a equipment dealer uh, specialist. You know, we, we really focus in on activating the amenity spaces through a consultative approach. Uh, we obviously can procure and curate equipment, um, be it flooring, treadmills, ellipticals, um, the, the whole soup to nuts uh, is what we're able to encompass here. And we're also a part of um, some sister companies and partnerships that really allow us to expand even further out into the many offering uh, that we specialize in. So um, let's let's dive right in here. So one of the top questions uh, that we've been getting and, and really two, two things to focus in on here are what needs to be done to ensure the fitness center is safe to reopen and stay open. And the reason we say open and stay open is uh, we cover territory that's from Maine to Miami and also operations in Chicago. And every demographic is different. Um, South is obviously a little bit different than New York City and Boston and Chicago, uh, but we've opened facilities. We've reclosed them. We're still waiting to open some at this point. Um, and we've learned a lot through this process over the last five to six months. So there's some key takeaways in all of this. Uh, and what New York City has actually just recently released, uh, I think really helps to validate what we've been educating people on for the last five to six months. So. We're gonna cover not so much the details of reopening, um, but a couple of the first steps you should take in figuring this out, and then more details on, on staying open. And then obviously the, the latter part here, we're gonna dive into amenity trends and what we're actually starting to see in some of those areas that have opened. Um, just, I'll call it post COVID trends, uh, but some of the pressures and demands that are, are, are happening within these amenity spaces um, with some of the things that are going on with commercial gyms, either being available or closed or reopening, um, concerns, um, things like that. So <clears throat> we'll go to the next slide here. So starting point, right? What we're going to cover, um, two simple things, right? Reopening checklist. If you haven't done this, right? Simple checklist that we've been providing everybody. It doesn't give you all the details, but it's a starting point. So I'm going to run through a checklist with you. Then we're going to dive deeper into an amenity assessment. We're going to cover trends. And then the last little piece I have for you is just some high level pieces of a 17 page document uh, that the state of New York has published by Governor Cuomo. Um, and just these are some of the things that I think we can take as an industry into perspective. A lot of it we've been preaching since day one, uh, but now we've got some validation um, and a lot of good detail 
um, on, on what to do to keep these environments safe, reopen them or keep them uh, open for a long time. So reopening checklist, a uh, couple quick bullets, but if you look at the, the, the graphic here on the side, we've got about 20 different things that you kind of need to check off that you're researching, figuring out, communicating. Um, obviously, the first one is design and layout. If you, if you, this is the first webinar that you've been on, uh, there's a lot to understand with social distancing, physical distancing, CDC, masks, things like that. You've got to take this environment and relay it out, right? We are the experts in doing that. That's what we do from concept to completion with new facilities, upgrades, things like that. We understand these guidelines now, given the COVID situation, you absolutely need to have someone come in and professionally guide you through this process to make sure you're creating an inviting and safe environment, right? Whether you're reopening or you're already open. Um, your operating and communication plan, huge, huge part of doing this uh, the right way, safely, um, and creating an environment that it's, it's not a war zone. It's not scary, right? It feels okay for people to come in and work out and they know you're doing uh, more than the minimum, okay? So having an operating plan and a communication plan, if not the number one, I know I put in number two here, but this is the most important thing that you can do. All the other things are more processed. You have to communicate properly. Um, disinfecting process. We've gone over this in several other webinars. Uh, Heartline has a three-step process to disinfecting and protecting the equipment. The key in this is you can't just spray anything on the equipment. You can damage it, it'll be rendered out of order, and the equipment is expensive. And given the fact that um, you know, we're reducing the amount of equipment that is being you know, able to be used by 50%, or in the case of New York, occupancy is 33%, um, it's critical that you don't damage the equipment that there's such a high demand for it, right, when we do reopen. So using the right solutions, uh, if you're not bringing a professional in like Heartline Fitness, obviously janitorial, you, you need to ask them what are they spraying, what are they using, uh, and we can give you some guidance on what to use and what not to use so they don't damage the equipment. Logging in your users. Again, um, you're going to be involved in controlling how many people are in the room, right? Um, you you want to have some sort of, whether it's electronic or it's a sign-up sheet, you want to be able to log and do some sort of screening of people that are accessing these fitness centers, okay? So another very important thing to control the environment, but also understand uh, if you need to kind of trace back from an incidence uh, who possibly you know, could have been impacted, you need to make sure you're logging these um, users in and obviously screening them too. Uh, and when I say screening, this is really, there's all kinds of different levels to this, um, but, you know, at a, at a bare minimum, you know, a self-assessment of, you don't have a fever, you're not coughing, you're sick, you're washing your hands, you haven't traveled, you know, everything that CDC and Department of Health have, have been publishing. Uh, next easy item, and again, we're, we're getting validation and support from what Governor Cuomo has just released uh, for New York State. Um, you need to do an investigation on your HVAC system, right? Do you have proper filtration? Uh, we've been educating here on um, a different approach versus filtration where it's supply side and we're su supply side, excuse me, and we're seeking and attacking the air in the room and the surfaces in the room rather than waiting for it to come through a filter to take care of those pathogens or the viruses. So we have a little bit different approach. Um, all of these methods are, are effective, but obviously there's, there's good, there's better, and there's great. Uh, but again, this, this is a checkpoint for you on your checklist to make sure that um, you have proper ventilation uh, into these smaller spaces. Mass required. Um, I've been saying this since day one, right? So I know it's inconvenient. I know all the the reasons why not to do it and things like that, but it is your number one uh, defense in, in a lot of this um, with how the COVID virus is, is transferred. So wearing a mask um, is, is, is critical in this. So if you need a checklist, you need more help from us, um, and I'll reiterate this again, but we're available at info at heartlinefitness.com. Uh, we can send you these documentations, the recording, this PowerPoint. So let's move on to amenity assessment. So 
we, we've always done amenity assessments, um, but given COVID, we felt there's, there's a huge need to kind of elevate uh, what our experts are actually providing to communities as we design, as we update, as we lay out uh, and help people through these amenity space, specifically fitness. So, you know, there's, there's three things I think to address in any of assessment, right? Why, right? Why do we have these amenity spaces, right? What are, what are we doing in these amenity spaces, right? What needs to be done um, and how do we actually do it? And, and all of this we've found um, circles back in, and in the commercial gyms, your corporate office gyms, your apartments, your condos, um, everything really comes back to outside of health and well-being, right? The community, the lifestyle, this is a part of people's lives now. And that's why this is so important. It's so all over the news right now when everybody is in such an uproar is because we've, we've taken something critical away from them um, that's important to their lifestyle, their community, their health, their way of being, right? And we've changed that routine. So it's, it's, it's very difficult when you take something very important away from somebody. Um, so what we're trying to do in, in our amenity assessment here um, is, is really answer initially the why, what, and how, if you didn't know, okay? So the why is pretty easy, and I went to a couple bullets here, but community, lifestyle, health, the wellness, retention. If you're running an apartment complex, retention is huge, right? Fitness centers are the number one amenity, right? Right next to pools. Your rental rates, your property value, if, if you are a condo or an HOA, um, you may be charging amenity fees. If you're a commercial gym, how much can you charge uh, for that membership, right? So at the end of the day, this is, there's health, there's wellness, there's return on the investment. Um, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, kind of, and we'll call it post-COVID, but here's what's coming. There's a tremendous amount of pressure and demand on these amenity spaces now that they're opening versus what people have been able to to get in commercial gym spaces in the past, right? Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that is the why we're doing the assessment from our customers, from our users, the what, well, what's being done? What's being done to make you know, this a great amenity space through lifestyle community, activating it, and how do you do it, right? There's products, there's paint, there's flooring, there's equipment, there's, there's all these things, virtual fitness, how do we get this done, right? And I'll go back to meeting the demand. If you haven't done updates and you haven't, you've kind of just gotten by, you got a good fitness center, but you don't have a great one, you don't have the best in class, um, you're going to need to take a hard look at this, right? And this is why we're doing these amenity assessments. So I've got a number of pages here that, you know, I'm going to share with you. I'm not going to go into detail of, of all of them in the assessment, but I'm going to give you some of the secret sauce because that's what you showed up for. Um, it's a 30 page document. It goes into a lot of detail specifically to your facility, right? But also specific to that, that how, right? And the why and the what, right? We want to educate you on the whole thing, not just one little niche uh, in the fitness center. So again, you can see where our lifestyles and community page is, is the third one in here. It's where we start off. We've got several other pages here right now. We're focusing in on COVID and reopening and staying open. So there's a lot of considerations to take, you know, understand based on your region and some of those local and federal and state mandates. We're performing layouts, right? We're looking at all your assets. We're giving you specific feedback on your cardio area, your free weight area, um, other amenity spaces, what can you do to improve that, that why, right? That, that return on your investment, the retention, the value of your property. Uh, we're looking at all of it for you. So it's a comprehensive document. I will tell you, we charge for it. This takes a considerable amount of time for us to prepare um, and our experts to come in and evaluate things. Um, here's some additional pages just to kind of whet your thirst for what this actually is about. So again, some more Asset recommendations based on you know what we've seen at the facility, some key data points right on your amenity return on your investment. What what are what are these data points from Heartline? What are these data points from other industry specialists that um, different markets? Uh, there's a way to interpret how amenities impact uh, revenue for them, right, or or retention. 
we go through, um, <clears throat> and I go into more detail with this, but there's a couple key takeaways in this that I think are important, right? We're gonna give you an assessment and evaluation, but we're gonna give you something to do, right? You're gonna know what to do, what action to take at the end of the day. And, in, 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 I'll just make an example of, of a board, right? If you've got to present this to a board, there's a few pages that you may want to pull out or you want to give them the whole packet, right? But here's what we need to do. Here's an executive summary, right? And within all of that, you are going to have a pathway, right? To reopen, stay open, or enhance your amenity spaces to go from good to great to best in class or even better than best in class if that's the case. So you will get a complete assessment and an understanding of here's what I need to do. I will kind of throw this out there. It's not a part of the assessment right now. We are developing a scoring system. This will help you determine, hey, I may have scored an 80. How do I get an 85, right? And at that same time, we're also gonna give you what's going on in your area right? How, how do some of your maybe competitors, um, sister properties, how are they scoring in the amenity space? So there's more to come with the assessment, um, but tons of value in this. And again, I talked about the checklist, the amenity assessment. These are the first steps you need to take right now in reopening, right? And staying open and down the road, how do we go from good to great to best in class in our amenity spaces? Because the pressure to execute on these amenity spaces, it's, it's there now, but it's, it's, it's throttling up, okay? Layout, so I'm gonna run through a couple pieces really quick here that are in the amenity assessment. We're gonna do a full layout on you, right? This layout basically is, is very generalized. It's simple for this presentation. Uh, you will get a layout that starts to tell you, here's the flow of the room, one-way traffic, access, right? Whether you have two doors, one door, signage, where do you need to put wipes, disinfectant, hand sanitizer? Um, if you have a multi-purpose room, how can we take some of the equipment and lay it out into a different room? So the layout is critical, right? I said that already. You will have that as a part of your assessment and lots of things, obviously, to go through. Detailed recommendations on your assessment, okay? We're gonna look at all aspects of your fitness center and additionally some other amenity spaces that you may be offering. Um, we're gonna provide detail on every single asset. Is it in good condition? Is it warm? What's the age of it? Um, yeah, are you outside of your warranty? Um, Heartline also has a, a really nice piece of technology that's our customer portal that we manage all this stuff for you and make it easy for you to put in service calls or know how much you've spent on it. Um, is it, you know, does it have a good health reading? Is it red, green, or, or orange based on usage or error codes that it's throwing off? So, so technology has really come a long way in the last five years, specifically to equipment. And it's opened up some doors for us to really make this easier, right? More, more transparent on what's been going on with your equipment. And in the past, this could have been a paper document and you're running through papers to see what you did on the equipment, right? You might not know uh, specifically the usage over time. Uh, so again, knowing your asset detail, knowing the recommendations on the assets, it, it's critical to our assessment. So action items, uh, again, just quick little overview. Uh, you will get more detail on our assessment, but Sometimes we need to consolidate equipment. Sometimes we need to move accessories. Sometimes you need to get rid of some of the accessories given COVID. Um, what's the proper disinfection protocol that you should follow? Um, enhancing user flow. So that's something that's gonna come from your layout. Limiting occupancy. Obviously, you know, you're taking other, every other piece out because of physical distancing. And in some case, you know, there could be 50% to 33% occupancy that you have to follow that's being mandated by state or local officials. Executive summary, again, this is where we come back to where I started, right? The why, the what, the how. So versus the initial page, which is a little bit more boilerplate, okay? We're gonna give you the specific why to your facility, the specific what, and the specific how to get that done, okay? So you're getting action items, you're getting a layout, 
You're getting all these recommendations, right? But you're getting a specific plan on what to do with this amenity space. Okay, so um, next piece that we wanted to talk about is really the trends, right? So we've, we've been at this since you know, Mar March or April, and March or April were a little bit of a, a, a blur. Um, but there's there's been some good things that have come out of this. There's been, you know, a mountain full of challenges for, for all of us. Um, I, th I think there's some, some changes and some awareness um, that people have right now uh, in some of the actions that in the fitness uh, industry um, that people have taken that that are going to change this landscape for us moving forward, right? So I want to talk about some of those trends that we've seen now. And I also want to talk about here's what we're kind of forecasting and seeing, you know, as we start to move out of this, which we're not really moving out of it in some cases right now. Um, but I, th I think everyone needs to start to plan and understand this now, similar to the conversation I had in March and April on these webinars with Here's the plan you need to put in place to reopen. Here's the cleaning you need to do. Let's get the maintenance. Let's get ready now, right? So that when it's time, we can do this right. So I think that's kind of the post COVID conversation here for we have opened, right? Now we're getting pressure. Now we're getting more demand uh, as some of these other things have, have changed and it's more evident that they have changed and this is becoming the norm. What do we do? So, Fitness and many trends, right? Um, obviously, this is an easy one. Um, outdoor fitness equipment and programming, okay? So when I say programming, um, that can mean a variety of things, right? There's content, there's programming. Um, we'll save that for a different webinar, but you can't, you can't really set even a fitness center in place and forget about it, right? You don't want to spend 20 grand, 50 grand, half a million bucks, and the place is a ghost town, right? you have to do more to really ensure these, these spaces are activated or to provide programming or something virtual to engage, right? And this, this goes back to the community and the lifestyle. Um, so outdoor fitness is, is becoming obviously more popular, right? We're not in a confined space um, and all the things that go with air quality, surfaces, things like that. Uh, being outdoors is much safer um, and we can get it done. There's lots of great equipment out there. Um, to help you know, create that new environment for you if you don't have one or upgrade that outdoor fitness or trail that you may have on, on your property. Creating wellness and recovery uh, areas. Uh, this has been up and coming um, and, it's, and it's a very hot topic uh, even prior to COVID. Um, more focus on well-being and wellness uh, inside the fitness center and even outside of the fitness center is a part of these amenities that we're offering. So how do we build this in um, to that environment, right? Are we designing it? Are we programming it with our developers? Are we taking space that's maybe not used and repurposing it? Um, not everybody works out. And I'll be the first to say that. That number's been about 16% of our population has a gym membership since I was in college, which was a while ago. Um, it is growing, but you understand 16%, the other part of it doesn't have a gym membership. Uh, what are we doing for them, okay? And the, and the gym may be intimidating to them or it may not just be their thing, right? So creating environments that help people recover, rejuvenate, recharge, you had a tough day, right? Where can I go to reset, right? There's physical, right? And the gym takes care of that, uh, but there's mental and there's other things that we can take care of people uh, and create these types of environments. So creating wellness and recovery environments um, outside of the fitness center, inside the fitness centers, that is a very hot trend right now. Opening up spaces and allowing um, for more activity and physical distancing, right? Our gyms typically have been designed to just press as much equipment in here as possible and run everybody through. Well, we know right now that doesn't work very well. Um, so what are we doing in the fitness centers Right, and what are we doing with these spaces outside that could again be repurposed, right? Or maybe you're in the design phase. We wanna give people more room to feel safe, right? To be able to participate um, and create these rooms so that they're, they're not just 
singular in function, right? You've created a room that can be programmed, right, differently depending on the activity, the seminar, the service, bingo, you know, whatever it may be you want to do with that space, it needs to be vertical, uh, versatile. All right, some more trends for you. Um, virtual fitness, right? This, this, is, this was hot before it needed to be hot, right? And everybody's heard of Peloton and uh, you're virtually in that spin class. Uh, this has gone through the roof, right? One of the things I can tell you with virtual fitness um, and programming is um, it's great. Uh, it does get the job done. There's, there's another piece to it to understand, and, and this is specific to how you approach it, your property, you know, what's your members, what's your residents, what's your owners, what are they looking for? There is a difference between a virtual class where it's an instructor who you have no idea who they are, whether they're celebrity uh, or not, right? The other side of the fence is, hey, here's the guy I know, right? that I always went to his class. Right now he's running the virtual class. There's a comfort level. There's, I know him, right? We're, we're connecting personally through virtual fitness. That is, if you can do that, right? That is the piece that people are missing because we're starving for that engagement and that social piece, right? So as a whole, virtual fitness is huge right now, right? But if you can, I'll go back to good, better, best, right? The best way, if you can do this, right, and it's done through management companies and, and things like that, is how do you provide people this programming, right? Not just content from anybody, but the programming through people that they are acquainted with, they know, they feel comfortable, they trust. That is, that's a big one, right, on, on the virtual side. And one of the differences that we see just specifically in that virtual fitness trend is there's two things going on, right? Um, next bullet really, you know, AEDs. And, and I can simply explain, you know, this is you are not gonna wanna get too close to somebody. Uh, you're gonna wanna help, uh, but given COVID right now, um, you know, chest compressions, mouth to mouth, these things are challenging, right? So specifically in a fitness center, you, you, you should have this, like it should be a no brainer. If you don't have one, shame on you. Um, but in other spaces, right? This needs to be available. This is what's going to save somebody's life, all right? Getting an ambulance to there or EMTs, you know, things like that, it takes time. This is the one piece that you can very quickly put on somebody, save their life till those medical professionals arrive. So given COVID, there's an elevated, you know, demand um, and understanding of the importance of these, um, not just in the fitness center, but throughout uh, the properties, right? We want to save people's lives. Clean air. We're going to talk about this a little bit, um, probably more on the Q&A and in some other webinars, but uh, we've been talking about uh, Atmos air and bipolar ionization, right? There's a couple different ways to attack uh, filtration, HVAC, um, the indoor air quality, right? Um, this has, has uh, you know, obviously been validated with, with what Governor Como has, has published where you need to do something, right? And I've got some bullets on all that, but um, it's something we've been driving. Uh, there's, there's not just the benefits of attacking the air in the space and killing off COVID. There's, there's energy efficiencies, there's energy savings, there's green buildings, there's well buildings. There's so much more than just COVID that this is, this is the healthy, right thing to do to have better air inside, especially when you're trying to get fit, right? Um, so clean air, very important. And again, there's a heightened awareness of this, obviously now, uh, trending up in the fitness space and throughout buildings, you know, all the amenity space, office buildings, everything. Controlling your access to amenity spaces. Again, you know, you, you kind of want to do that screening. You want people to log in. If you do have an incidence, you kind of want to be able to trace back through it. Um, and help people in case they were exposed. So controlling the access in that point, and, and obviously you don't want crowding, um, physical distancing, things like that. Uh, you have to control that environment. Large multi-purpose rooms being confined and, and creating separate amenity spaces. I kind of touched on that in the last slide. So again, 
where we may have made these spaces smaller and just unique to a certain card room or something like that, um, the trends are to, rather than singular type rooms, make it a bigger room that can be you, you know, shared for different purposes. Okay, so that this is the, the last piece really on trends and this, this, this slide really the bullets that I'm talking about here is maybe more post COVID, if you will, right. So here's some of the things that that we're seeing happening um, with the new spaces that we're designing with the spaces that we have already opened in, in some of our southern markets and elsewhere um, that haven't had as a great impact in some cases that there there's there's a pressure right to execute and have exceptional amenities right and it ties back to the the value of the property it ties back to retention in rental properties it ties back to i don't feel comfortable going to that larger gym right or i've bought home equipment and i've reinvested that money somewhere else right with that gym membership so i'm seeing it in fitness I, I, you if you're going to restaurants, take a look around there. The expectation of service at a restaurant, indoor, outdoor, whatever it may be, it hasn't changed and it's gone up, right? So that is what's coming down the pike in the fitness centers, where if, if you haven't done the upgrades, right? You don't, you've just got good, you don't have better or best in class, right? That demand is coming, right? They, they want that exceptional facility at home, right if they haven't bought it in their home they want it close by i don't want to travel there's there's still some fear obviously out there um, but there is pressure to make these spaces even better than they were so good news for us obviously um design right the design must be inviting and, and i'll just go back to our assessment right i've gotten questions should we put tape on it right and i'm i'm seeing it and i'm being questioned with like you know, the crime scene taste. And it's just like, you don't want to do that from your signage, right? To how you shut machines down to your layout, everything. You want this to be inviting, right? You, you need, the demand is coming. It needs to be exceptional. And if it's not, right, it's going to hurt your retention. It's going to deteriorate your property value. People are going to go elsewhere where somebody's doing it better, right? So, bring in the professionals, make sure this is being done at a higher level um, so that you can, you know, I'll call keep up with the Joneses, right? It's, it's coming. Um, access and support. So support, broad, broad, broad term here, right? What does that mean? Uh, we talked about access. Support is coming in the form of a few different things, right? Where you might not have had an attendant to your fitness center. Uh, it may be something that you want to do, right? Whether it's simply just to disinfect and ensure we're not crowding and some of these other things that are going on with, you know, reopening and CDC and Department of Health. Um, we're, we're seeing more support in the fashion of an attendant, um, which then I think leads into not just an attendant, but help me with fitness, help me with wellness, help me with nutrition, right? There's so many other things we can do with that spot. Again, how do we make that amenity exceptional, right? So access and bringing in more support being physical people um, or technologies is obviously another way in there too, but nothing, nothing beats people. Um, commercial gym feel um, and customer service, but at my home. Again, so a little bit of the same thing. I want this to feel just like my, my commercial gym, my country club, if not better, so that I don't have to travel there or go there, some of these other things. So we, we do a, a lot of properties in New York City, which is, it's, it's extreme, right? We've, we've done amenity spaces that literally cover 100 to 125,000 square feet of two to three story towers in midtown Manhattan. Um, do we see that? In South Carolina and Tennessee and Kentucky and, and Maine, no, to totally different, right? Um, but at that high level or even at, you know, that smaller property level that maybe only has four or 500 square feet, the expectation is really the same, right? I want that same experience um, 
in the equipment, right? In the technology, in the space and how it feels. So again, expectations are going up. Connectivity, um, again, back to the trends. Some of this stuff is here now, but a lot of the vendors, a lot of the manufacturers are highly focused on this. How do we put more apps into the equipment that help you connect? And again, people run through apps, right? Every, I don't know, two weeks, six weeks, depends on how old you are, right? You, you, you're, you're, you're flushing through the next trendy app that just came up. But being able to integrate that, right, into whatever the user wants to do and how fast they cycle through them, right? You want those applications to be able to work in that fitness environment. That's their lifestyle, right? Their lifestyle may change from a new app every two weeks, right? Or maybe just one app and that's what they love to do and that's it, right? But does it work with my equipment? Can I take it with me on dog walking? Does it help me find restaurants, right? All these things are a part of that community and that lifestyle. Fitness is the number one amenity. How do we get involved in that engagement, okay? So those are the things that are being built. Some equipment has it, some equipment doesn't. Um, but lifestyle, community, activation through the fitness equipment, it is available, it's coming, and it's only going to increase. All right, so the last piece I wanted to just touch on here, and we'll open up to Q&A after this, is um, we just got a release on, you know, Governor Como, I've mentioned it a few times here, and his opening fitness center guidelines. This is, I don't know, I got 10, 10 bullets here, right? This is a 17-page document that you need to read. It is very, uh, it's, it covers a lot. It covers a lot. And it's going to take you a few passes to read through this. Um, and we're covering from commercial gyms to spas, to fitness, to residential gyms. It, it covers the entire gamut of, of fitness. Um, but I want to touch on a few key points here. And if you need access to this, obviously you can, you know, search it on Google, go to the website. We have it in a PDF form and I'm happy to email it to you. But um, the first piece here is the ability to open up the gyms August 24th. Okay. Now this is the governor of New York. There's still local control. Okay. So you can start doing this on the 24th, but local control can actually, you know, say, hey, we're not ready. Right. Um, September 2nd, that starts to diminish, okay? And I just, I won't go into all the details of who's doing what or whatever. You need to read about that on your own. Um, but specifically New York City, obviously things are a little bit different than the rest of the state. So there's two dates here. One is the 24th, right? The other one is September 2nd, okay? So read the document so that you fully understand that. Another key piece here, uh, and I mentioned it is 30% capacity based on occupancy, okay? So this in some applications is even less than what we may have been designing for, um, specifically in New York, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, um, the distancing factor in our layouts still holds true. You just may have to do a slight adjustment where you've got an extra piece of equipment that can't be used because you can't put that extra person in there because your occupancy doesn't allow it, right? So the layouts can be effective, but you still need to go back to what you were approved for from the fire marshal and the occupancy and everything else. Take 33% and that's how many people you can put in that space. The amenity, you know, multi-purpose room, all that applies into those spaces. Next bullet is rigorous safety standards and inspections. Um, there is an inspection that you need to have done uh, prior to opening or within two weeks, okay? And this is being done by the local officials um, in the health department. So again, reading up on this, knowing how you get that in inspection uh, so that you can open, uh, but that is a part of the process to ensure that things have been put in place um, to keep things safe. And again, I'll fall back to our assessment, right? That is gonna help you accomplish this in, in New York. Um, access, right? There's, there's, there's actually a mandate in here that you follow some of the guidance from the Department of Health and signage, right? And most of this we're familiar with, with washing our hands and distancing and all that stuff, but make sure you get it right, okay? So you can go and refer to that document. You wanna have signage, you wanna do screening, 
you want to maintain these, these records, all this stuff uh, for 28 days in case you have an incidence. Um, PPE, again, there's more detail on this, right? But we are requiring masks to be worn for the participants, the trainers, the employees, everyone, okay? And it's nose and mouth. Uh, there's a few things that are not allowed, um, and I'll let you read up on that, but you know, bandanas, biffs, gaiters, things like that are mentioned. Uh, we really want to ensure that here's, here's a standardized approach to wearing a face mask. Uh, and it is worn going into the building and worn during exercise, um, which that needs to be clarified. Uh, some people are doing, you know, obviously different things there. Um, distancing, right? Um, that's a given. Everyone knows about that. Hygiene and cleaning. So elevated uh, disinfecting and cleaning. Uh, there's there's some good reads in here and understanding what the difference is between cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, and sterilization, right? You need to clean stuff before you disinfect it because if it's dirty and you put a disinfectant on it, um, the disinfectant's not going to be as effective, okay? So understanding how you're cleaning. The other piece that I will advise you on is make sure you're cleaning with stuff that doesn't damage the equipment, right? So whether you're using us, if you're using us, you're safe, right? you're just using your janitorial company or whatever it may be, um, you need to ask them, hey, what are you spraying on the equipment? Because this stuff is sensitive. You can't put certain solutions on this because they're corrosive or they're you know, conductive and you could short things out or damage consoles, touch screens, things like that. So uh, understand this um, and make sure you're doing it right. Um, inside the space, making it convenient. And again, this is one of the things that we've provided in our layouts and our designs and we've preached the whole time. If you put the gym wipes halfway across the room, nobody's gonna walk over to use them when they just got off the treadmill, right? This stuff needs to be accessible. It needs to be right there. And that's gonna get you complacency with keeping it clean, right? Which is one of the other things with the state of New York is it has to be cleaned after every usage, right? By the user or you're providing staff to ensure that's done, okay? And we've preached that from day one. Clean it before you use it, clean it after you use it, right? That's the correct approach. <clears throat> um, some stuff on, on water fountains, water bottles, right? Water bottle fillers are okay. You know, communal water fountains, close them. Communal showers, close them. Again, this, we're, we're talking New York here. Uh, single showers, again, I don't, I'm not sure how you execute on this one, right? But after somebody, uses that singular shower, you've got to go in and clean it. Uh, maybe best just to shut that one down. Cleaning's not, uh, not free and it's not cheap. Um, air handling, we touched on that. Um, State of New York is re recommending you have a minimum of a MERV-3 filtration uh, or greater. Um, or older systems, depending on what you've got, right? There's a process to go through these, these regulatory um, uh, A-S-H-R-A-E, I'll let you read on that one, um, but they can guide you through with what you need to do to have something similar to these standards to operate, okay? And what Heartline has been talking about, and just a, a quick difference so you know kind of two approaches to this, right? Filtration is catch and grab. Doesn't do anything for the surfaces in the room, right? So you're spending money to disinfect that, okay? has to get to the filter, has to get to the UV lights, right? It's not attacking the air or anything in the space. It's waiting for it to get to the, to the, to the filtration or, or whatever's capturing it. Um, what we've been promoting is a system called Atmos Air, and it's on the supply side. So we are pumping in bipolar ions that actually go in and attack these pathogens, cleaning out the air, even we're talking about this prior to COVID, right? So reducing pathogens, reducing VOCs, the mold, the fungus, the bacteria, all that stuff, we're attacking it in the space. We don't have to wait for it to get to a filter. So there's a difference between catch and grab, and I'll call it seek and destroy, right? So in this space, we can more effectively than any filtration or UV light, attack it on the surfaces in the air with this type of system. So as you go through this, uh, evaluation with their HVA system. Uh, just know there's a lot of options here. There's a lot of snake oils out there. Um, do your due diligence uh, to provide the, you know, the safest and healthiest environment that you can for people. Um, inspection, again, to open up, 
Uh, you can open up, but within two weeks, you need to have a, a, an inspection. I would advise making sure you know what you're doing there. The, the last thing you want to have happen is you opened up, you didn't get your inspection, an inspector comes in and he shuts you down. That's not a good day um, to have to tell your members, your community. Um, you want to make sure you've, you've got all your I's dotted and T's crossed before, before you do this. And then the last piece really here is, you know, always fall back on, you know, ADA, CDC, OSHA, EPA. There's a lot to understand in here. And, and in a lot of fitness centers, when we're, we're doing our assessment, right, we're looking at ADA, right? That, that's important. That's actually a part of, you know, the mandate here with New York is that you ab abide by ADA standards. So running through all these types of, you know, requirements and, um, you know, government agencies to understand it is a lot. So I, I go back again, having a professional come in, do your assessment to interpret this. Uh, we've done a lot of homework on it. Uh, it's our expertise. It's, it's what we do, do, do day in and day out. And every gym is different. The size of it, the equipment of it, the demographic of it, um, what's your intent of that fitness center providing is always different. So don't, don't go at it alone. There is help. Um, and that's it. So I, I will, we'll pause here and we'll go to Q and A and I thank everyone for their time. Um, we're going to hang out here and answer all the questions. If we wrap them up, uh, we'll close out on the webinar, but we will answer the questions till they, till they stop. We will publish this back out to everybody. It will be on our insights section of our website, uh, within the next day or so. Um, for you to share or, or, or watch the recording again. So um, we've got one question here, Jeff, if we were interested in an assessment, is there a cost for the service and who should we contact? So just contact us at the, the email address here, info at Heartline Fitness, and we'll get you in touch with the, the right uh, expert to help you through that assessment. So um, we are charging for these, it's, it's, it's not, there are cases that we have done it for free, right? They are s small cases, okay? Um, this, this takes us a fair amount of time to come to your facility, um, spend time looking at uh, everything that's going on and then actually type this assessment up. So uh, our, our experts time is valuable um, and we are charging for it. What they actually charge for it uh, may have to do with, you know, how involved it is uh, and the extent that you want us to go with the assessment too. So price price does vary. Uh, and again, uh, it's very comprehensive. Um, so we are charging for it. Next question is you mentioned a portal for managing the fitness center assets. How does that work and how can it help our apartment complexes? So we've we've launched, um, it's called the HLB and it's it's a communication tool at its its simplest form, okay? So we are able to all the information that we've always tracked for you that, you know, maybe a different provider, it's on a piece of paper. We've always had all that information in our ERP CRM system, right? So the history of what you've spent, how many service calls, when's your warranty up, what are your serial numbers? We have access to all that. We've always stored it. It's our, it's our data, it's your data. We've created a mobile app that really allows you to see all that data and communicate with us more effectively um, and kind of with yourself and making decisions on what you should do, right? Should we rotate equipment around? Have we spent too much money on that bike, right? Is my warranty about to expire? Um, this communication tool allows you to see all your assets. You could tap a button, put in a service call, and I'll just, I'll call it Uberizing, right? You're not gonna see the little car, but you're gonna know when it's scheduled. You're gonna know when he's on his way. You're gonna know when it's completed. You can view the PDF paper right, uh, that you may be experiencing with another vendor. We don't really do paper anymore. Got rid of that years ago. Um, but a great communication tool really to facilitate um, ease of doing business with us, right, and share that information rather than you calling me, emailing me, all these other things. Can I just put it in the palm of your hand, right, and you have access to it. You could be talking to, to a board member. You could be talking to a regional manager or an owner of the property right, and they've got a question, why not be able to look it up right now? Hey, when's that bike getting fixed? Okay, I can see the progress of that bike getting fixed right here, I know. 
So great tool. We are onboarding customers with that right now. Um, so if you are interested in that, uh, just you know, email us at info at heartlinefitness.com and we'll get you on the, the schedule uh, and get you, get you launched. Next question. So we are entering budget season. How can Heartline help our property with the fitness, and set, fitness center for both future capital requirements as well as potential operating expenses for 2021? Great question. Um, so yeah, budget questions are coming in. Um, this is an extension of what we would do in our assessment. Uh, and it has a few different variations or levels to it, right? We have the ability, if you want, you know, a cap expenditure rolled out for the next five to 10 years, um, we can do that, right? Whether it's CapEx, your reserves, things like that. Um, we obviously are evaluating your equipment. We know when it's going to wear out. We know when you need to keep up with the Joneses, right? We can put those plans in place for you so that, you know, at the end of the day, here's, here's what you don't like, right? You don't like surprises in your monthly budget and you don't like surprises in your CapEx, right? So if we can start to take care of that for you and you have a little bit of a lens on what's gonna need to happen over the next two years, five years, even 10 years, um, to again, keep that amenity space exceptional, um, we can do that. We can certainly help you with, with your budget and include that in the assessment and the studies that we're doing. Another question is, my property wants a preventative maintenance contract. Does Heartline handle these? Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that we're doing with preventive maintenance, and so we've always done that, um, and given COVID right now, disinfect and protect, um, it's a three-step process for us. Um, we can split out these services between disinfecting and PM, uh, but it's highly recommended. Most of our preventative maintenances, they're quarterly, and that's manufacturer recommended. We come in, we clean, we calibrate, we make it safe and we make it operational, right? And you're gonna see any of those safety issues ahead of time before they happen and you, you have a liability on your case, right? So PM is important not only to, to keep it running, right? Um, but also to keep it safe so you're not spending your days in, in the courtroom. Um, the other piece to that that we're tacking on is the disinfect and protect, okay? so. We want to help you with the disinfectant, being able to have professionals come in, know the right solutions to use, right? And then also part of that program is an antimicrobial protection that, you know, it's, it's not EPA approved to kill COVID, okay? Our disinfectants do that. This is, this is the norm that should have been happening anyway, and it does in a lot of applications already, but the mold, the fungus, all these other things, there is efficacy with certain types of you know, viruses similar to Corona and things like that, that we, you know, we could talk about. But at the end of the day, um, I, I just say, if you've ever walked into a gym and it maybe smells a little strange, right? That's because stuff's growing somewhere, right? The antimicrobial protection, right? Reduces that bio buildup, that organic growth, right? And it, and it actually, you know, in some cases, it's killing off those germs, those viruses, those pathogens, so that if you pick them up, right, and just the common cold, you're not, you're not, you're less likely to get sick, right? So it's another preventative layer on top of all the disinfectant that we're doing that actually stays on the equipment for 90 days. So if we go back to the quarterly PM, the quarterly disinfectant by the professionals, right, and this protectant, this is a very effective way to set the stage for, for things being very healthy and clean in this environment. You still need to wipe before and after. You still need to come in and do your, your cleaning with your janitorial stuff, right? But it's an extra piece in there that we highly recommend you do, right? And it's gonna make your tenants, your users, your members, everybody's gonna feel safer that you're taking additional precautions and actions to make that a safe, inviting environment. Um, property brand, I think that's, I think that's it for the question. So um, again, I thank everyone for your time. Um, looks like we wrapped up pretty close to on time here and this will be recorded and we will see you next, next Wednesday. Thank you very much.